derivative of logarithmic function, we have two formula. The first one is the derivative of natural logarithm ln x that is equals to 1 over x. This formula is super popular in both differential calculus and integral calculus. So in calculus, you study derivative first and then you study integration. These are two classes. This formula is everywhere in these two classes. And then the less popular one is the common logarithm. I just called it the LOG versus the LN. So the LOG, there is a base A of x. This derivative is 1 divided by x times ln of a. So if the base is not mentioned, so let's say they ask you to find the derivative of log x, then by default, or I can say that, I should say that implied base is 10. So if the base is not mentioned, then you use base 10. Uh, let's take a look at how do they get the 1 over x times ln a. That is pretty interesting to know. So to get to the formula, we start with the function. So we have f of x equals to log base a. So let me uh, change my pen a little bit. So we start with f of x equals to, so f of x equals to log base a of x, common logarithm. And then this is called logarithmic form, right? Still remember that from your P calculus. And then you have to change this from logarithmic form to exponential form. So you take base A and then raise to F of X power equals to X. And this is called logarithmic form. And then you take the derivative on both sides. So let me uh, give myself some space. I'm going to put the X in here. The next step is I will take the derivative on both sides with respect to x, so I will write d dx and then d dx. We take the derivative on both sides with respect to x. All right, and then the derivative of x that is equals to one, very simple, the derivative of a raised to some power. So that is the derivative of exponential function, which is ln a times a to the x, right? So this one we have ln a, so ln the base and then times a to the whatever that is. So since that is a function, we have to use a chain rule to take the derivative of that, which is f prime of x. And then we divide both sides by this quantity, then we get f prime of x. So we have f prime of x, f prime of x is equals to one divided by the entire quantity ln a, and then times a to the f of x. And then that doesn't look like the formula we have, right? So do you still remember that at the very beginning, we said that um, x is equals to uh, x is equals to that. So we, if we do the plug-in, then we will get x. Still, we, we remember this, we have x equals to this. So that means this term is equals to x, right? So if we bring this back, if we bring this back to this line, so that we get f prime of x equals to 1 divided by ln a times x. Okay, so that's how we get the formula. Okay, let's do some examples. So let's do some examples. So first example, let's do a y equals to ln of a polynomial x squared plus 4x minus 10. So using chain rule, easy y prime. So when you see ln derivative, you bring everything down to, to the denominator. You have x squared plus 4x minus 10. You have a 1 on top. And then by chain rule, you need to multiply the derivative of the denominator, right? So using chain rule, what's the derivative? The derivative is 2x plus 4. So to put this in more compact form, put the 2x plus 4 in the numerator. All right. So moving on to the next problem, the next problem we have f of x equals to ln. Let's use some trigonometric function. How about sine of 3x and then plus tangent e to the x? Okay, so let me make a very important note. For the sine three, third power of x, so we have sine third power of x that is equals to sine of x raised to the third power. So when you do a function evaluation, so let's say x is equals to pi, you calculate what sine of pi equals to, and then you raise the result to the third power. The x, let me say this, the x does not raise to the third power. The 
the third power does not belong to x once again the third power does not belong to x you take care the sign of x first whatever the result equals to you raise that to the third power so you do not raise x to the third power okay so this one when you take the derivative f prime of x first you bring the whole thing to the denominator so you bring sine of sine third power of x and then plus tangent e to the x down and then you have a one on top and then you take the derivative of that so what is the derivative of uh sine third power of x so you bring the three down and then you have sine of x square and then the derivative of sine is cosine of course this is in one term and then you plus the tangent what's the tangent tangent is secant square e to the x and then times the derivative of e to the x and then for simplification you put the entire numerator to you put the entire parenthesis to the top uh, I have to remind you that when you take the derivative make sure you you keep the three outside of the sign if you don't if you keep the three between the sign and the x it is very easy to forget that there is a chain rule right so remember keep the sign out if you keep the sign if you keep the keep the three out if you keep the three between the sign and the x so after you bring the three down you put a square you might just say okay the derivative of x is equals to one there is nothing no, nothing else needs to be done which is a mistake okay here we go next problem let's use uh what color should i use let's use uh red we have g of x equals to ln and then e to x huh what is that equal to is there a, a way to rewrite the function so when you take ln e raised to some power or l ln a base raised to some power you can bring the power down that is the power rule or power property of ln so you can bring the power down to the front and then you have ln e and then ln e is equals to one so the function is just a 2x and then g prime of x just equals to two it is just that easy is there another way to do it sure you can follow the derivative of ln so you can do a g prime of x you have an ln right so ln means you put everything straight to the denominator and then you multiply the derivative of the denominator which is e to the 2x times 2 so you get rid of that you still get a 2 you get the same answer either way works okay so that is our number three let's do number four number four i have another ln for you so number four i'm going to use h of x equals to ln and then a lot of stuff inside this parenthesis e to the ax minus 7x minus cosine of 4x so for derivative you bring the ln you bring everything inside the parenthesis straight to the denominator minus cosine of 4x and then you multiply and then you apply the chain rule so that is e to the ax times a minus 7 and then the derivative of cosine is negative sine so the negative and this big minus becomes a plus and then you have sine of 4x by chain rule there is a 4 so this is a chain rule big chain rule and then this a is from a chain rule and then the 4 is from a chain rule and then to make this more compact just put the entire parenthesis to the numerator all right moving on moving on moving on so moving on we have k of x equals to ln i'm going to raise the whole thing to the 10th power and then i have one minus cosine divided by one plus sine so ln so you have L, ln uh, base let, let's make, make, make a base what kind of base do you want uh, let's make a base a to the uh, b power so this one you can bring the b down to the front times ln a right you bring the power down so this we can bring the 10 down we have 10 times ln 1 minus cosine x divided by 1 plus sine x so the 10 is just a constant we just keep it in there so k prime of x 
we keep the 10 in there and then we have one over right so we have one we have one divided by the entire parenthesis so one minus cosine x and then one plus sine of x the reason we put a 10 in there because we have 10 times one and then we use chain rule to take the derivative of that so that is a chain rule and then take the derivative of that we have a quotient rule what's quotient rule quotient rule is fg minus fg f first g second divided by g square so we square the denominator immediately and then the derivative of the top one is zero the derivative of cosine is negative sine so therefore you have a plus sine of x the minus minus becomes a plus and then you copy the denominator and then you minus the numerator one minus cosine and then the derivative of the denominator which is a cosine okay this one can be simplified so first for the k prime of x you can flip the denominator up so 10 times 1 plus sine of x and then divided by 1 minus cosine x and then you multiply 1 plus sine of x square and then the top do you do you see that the top right right here at the top we have sine of x plus sine square of x and then minus one right and then minus one and then plus cosine square of x and then we have the the properties do you still we remember that the, fun, the fundamental identity sine square plus cosine square that is equals to one so we have sine of x minus one plus one so overall this is a sine of x right sine square plus cosine square equals to positive one and then the positive one subtract this one you get a zero so we have sine of x left and then we can go further so this cancels with the power and then i think that that that's it so k prime of x equals to one minus cosine times one plus sine and then the top you have 10 times sine of x yep that is the answer to the last function and that is also the end of this video if you like it you think my teaching fits your learning give me a like share the video for me click the subscribe if you are new to the channel i will see you all in the next one signing out